what else have you seen? Have you have you been? I know you don't really do the dispo side of things, but you've been in our meetings. What what have what things have surprised you? I think how kind of all of a sudden everything stopped. It was all of a sudden. I mean, because it seemed like things were still going hot. It still had quite a few contracts or offers coming through, and then it was just like nothing. Nothing. And that and that is what happened in that moment um, to me is you had a whole bunch of rate lock people, a bunch of people that were tied in, had a rate lock, and they had to place it. So it was like they – The last batch of people Last batch affordable. of people, yeah, with that 4%, 3% interest rate – were, were placing that on real estate, and they knew they were going to lose it if they didn't place it. And so they had to buy something. They had to buy something. It was like having a 1031 exchange that was going to expire. So it, it, it forced their hand. That's why, you know, we've got a contract on a lot, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're not going anywhere. they got a rate lock. They're putting a mobile <laughs> home on it. They know what they're up against. If they go shopping again, if they try to go find something else, um, they're going to get a rate increase. So, um you know, we've got one person tied into that right now, but we only have four properties under contract for sale. Um, two of them are owner finance. Two of them are, or one of them's cash. Another one's conventional. Uh, we did get an offer that we can't accept on a property we stretched on when we bought it. Which when did, do you remember when we bought Willis Way? I think it was towards the end of the summer last year. So uh, probably a little less than a year. I think. You think we've owned that a year? It was rented when we bought it, so yeah. Well, because that took several months to what to get them out. Actually, no, they left and didn't tell us they left. It's it's a terrible story <laughs> on our end, but um, the previous owner was still collecting their rent. It, anyways, doesn't really matter. They were living there, and we had to go through a long eviction process because it's down by Austin. Um, but we're about to reset that market, so that property was a three hundred thousand dollar property. When we bought it, we bought it for one seventy five. It's a three hundred thousand dollar property, mobile home on an acre, um, San Marcos, Texas. Great, great, great area to own real estate in, and uh, market shifted. We stretched on that one, so that one broke my rules of one hundred fifty thousand dollars or less. Um, you know, we stretched on it, went one seventy five, and. Anyways, it got it when we finally got it on the market. We put it out for two seventy five. It got a ton of showings um, for the condition it was in. It got no offers, and finally we we just ran the math and said what what's the least amount we could take for this. We dropped it down to two thirty, and then got a two ten cash offer. So when we got a two ten cash offer, um, it you know I, I ran the numbers yesterday. We're sitting there in the meeting, and it's like we'll squeeze out a couple of grand on this if they'll pay closing costs. If they, um, we don't prorate taxes, and the sad part about that is what Braxton, when we take that offer and it closes, what's going to happen? I mean, make a thousand bucks. I'm not talking about us. What about it? What's going to happen to the neighborhood? Oh, he's going to take it. <laughs> yeah, the, all that three hundred thousand dollar <laughs> comps that were that were out there, they're gone. The only comp that's going to matter in the entire neighborhood for any appraiser is going to be us. that that two hundred ten thousand dollar. Um, 2,200 square foot house that sold, uh, four bed, three bath. It's just gonna, it's just gonna crater it. It's just gonna take that neighborhood all the way, um, down to the 200 mark, and that, and that's what people are up against right now. If you're, if you're in a marketplace right now and you're going on yesterday's comps, and one person takes one of these gut shot offers that a lot of people would be better off taking, um, your your comps, your your property is gonna instantly lost. Um, a ton of value there so um could happen to you i don't know what do, what do you what do you think going forward what do you think the the move is i think uh just keep buying our price point to where we can rent it given the the high interest rate in mind like what you've always said is if you're underwriting at 12 percent interest only it's going to be hard to hard to miss on that one it is until you got to pay principal at 12 percent too uh, that's true if it's 12 percent interest <laughs> you're like then you but, add a little principal on there, and you're like, damn, this still broke. All right, we're buying at 15% interest only underwriting. <laughs> yeah, 